I want you to be seated. Thank you so much. You guys look awesome. Look at the person next to you and say, you look like favor. <laughs> Come on, mean that. Say, you look like favor. I want to trust Jesus this morning as he did in the first service. I believe in the, in the second service that God wants to heal people. God wants to heal your body. He wants to heal your mind. And uh, I want us to go immediately into the scripture because I want to allow maximum time for the Spirit of the Lord to operate in and between us. Exodus chapter number 15, verse number 26. I want to read for you. Um, he said, if you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God. And I want to ask, before I maybe get into scripture, I want to ask everybody, you know, I see a lot of people watching us from different platforms. I want to ask you this morning to do me a favor and to invite somebody to church. Say, come and you know, I invite you to church, share that stream, get it out to people and invite people specifically. I believe God's going to touch people this morning, heal people, change people's lives. Amen. So uh, share the stream, get it out to other people, invite people to pray or oh, invite people to church. Exodus 15, 26. Are you there? So um, it's right in the beginning of the Bible, if you don't know. So if you go into the New Testament, you've gone too far, you have to go left again. So Exodus 15, 26. It says, as he said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, obeying his commands and keeping all of his decrees, then I will not make you suffer any of the diseases I send on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. I want you to please see that, that God is the one that heals us. God is a healer. Healing is not what he does, it's who he is. Healing is not what He does, it's who He is. Sickness is not for us as the covenant is with us. Sickness is not for us as the covenant has been made with us. As the covenant of health this morning, you and I need to understand the precept or the underlying truth that God has made a covenant of healing with you and me. It's part of the redemption plan. And so when God made us, He made us to be whole, to be healed, and to be delivered. Amen. And so in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 23, it's a well-known piece of scripture I quote it all the time. It says, may the God Himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the one who calls you is faithful, and He will do it. Please note that He will do it. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body, right? I'll say it again. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. And the only way that the enemy can stop that assignment that's upon your life is to attack your body. But you are a spirit, you have a soul, mind, will, and emotions, and you live in a temporary tent. This body you have to lay down once in the future, and then you will inherit the incorruptible life. But the scripture says, Christ in me, the hope of glory. In other words, if Jesus Christ is in me, we have to believe with the full truth of the scriptures that his being in me permeates every part of me. So Christ in me permeates my soul. Christ in me permeates my being. Christ in me heals my soul. Christ in me heals my body. I'm a carrier of God. Yes, if I am a carrier of God, then it, is imp then it should become an, an, irregu uh, an irregular thing for me to also carry sickness. Come on, can I have just some amens or something here back? Just talk to me. In other words, if Jesus healed your spirit, He heals the bodies the same. So what, is, what sin is to the soul, sickness is to the body. And Jesus died for both. I'll say it again, I want you to catch it. What sin is to the soul, sickness is to the body, and Jesus Christ died for both. In other words, if you believe that He died for your sins, you have to believe that He took your diseases. If Jesus, come on, it's, it's not a half gospel. If he, if he paid for your sins, which saves your spirit, then He paid for your soul and He paid for your body. You are kingdom property. 
Oh no, there's not a lot of people that believe what I'm saying. You are kingdom property. If you are kingdom property, disease, sickness, pestilence does not have a right over you. You are kingdom property. You belong to somebody that bought you. Let me use a, a phrase that you can understand healing. If somebody writes out a check, um, here in France, sits Pas Reichert as an example. If somebody writes out a check of a million rand and they give it to me and I open up the check because it's not in an envelope and I look at it and I see there is his name and I see a million rand, Reichert now million rand, then the check does not belong to me because it doesn't have my name written on it. So then I will call him and say, hey, there's a, there's a check of your name on and I'll give him the check. Please note, I'm distributing what somebody else has given me. I'm also distributing somebody else has paid for him. I'm a distribution center, right? I didn't, my, I didn't write the check. I'm not the recipient of the check but I'm a channel of the goodness of the Lord. Let me, let me reword it like this. The father wrote the check out. It's called healing. He signed it in the blood of his son. Redeemed. He put your name on it and he sent through the cross that message to you and I. Therefore, it is not clever to not bank a check that somebody else has paid for. Come on, think in the natural. If you have a million rand that is in your name, none of you, none of you will say, ah, I, I don't know if it's for me. All of you will run to Absa, run to Standard Bank, run to wherever and say, by the name of Jesus Christ, in it goes, I want it. And then you'll watch your app until the thing clears. <laughs> right? Is that true? Why? Somebody else paid for it and you have just redeemed it you want what somebody else gave you. Please note, before they gave it, you, had, don't, you didn't have a million bucks. But now that you have it and it's written your name, you suddenly want to claim it. And what is more, you get an attitude to that what is written for you. Right? Let me use another example. If, if somebody passes away and they leave a testament, and it has your name in it, and it says you've just inherited 10 million US dollars, you will not sit around and say, ah, maybe it shouldn't be for me. I'm not good enough. Let it go to so-and-so. No, you will stand in front of that lawyer's office. You will say, when can I have that's mine? Please note, you didn't die for it. You're a recipient of somebody that died for it. In other words, somebody else did the work and you are the beneficiary. The same of the Lord. The Lord did the work and you and I are the beneficiary. We have to bank the cross. We have to bank the redemption plan. We have to bank what the Bible has said about us and we must not settle for less. If he said it, you must bang that thing and say, Father, it's written in the blood. Are you guys there? So healing is a sheer grace gift by the power of the cross. Let me say it differently. You cannot let the Christ's back be full of stripes and you want your back full of stripes too. You cannot let his hands be pierced for your healing and then you settle for disease. You cannot. It's an insult to the cross. He paid for it, now redeem it. Come on, are you there? It's, it's important that you understand that because he paid for something that you and I can redeem. It's, it's crucial this morning that we get this understanding. You see, your, your spirit man is made whole at the point of salvation. But we have to believe that the same is true when it comes to our bodies. Oh, there's not a lot of amens. Are you guys tough or what? I say, preach into faith here. 
The Bible says that Jesus saves your spirit. The Bible says He saves your soul. The Bible says He saves your body. Now I want, I want to take you to there to the quickly for a moment. When you pass through the curtain, in other words, all of us will die once, right? If you come to the end of your life, your husband, your wife, your children are not there. They next to your bed, absolutely. But they cannot take you to the other side. They can't. The only person that decides between death and life has a name. His name is Jesus. So Jesus stands with the keys of hell, hates, and the grave. It's His. He has it. He decides. The Father, in that moment that you cross over, decides your destination already based on where you stand of Jesus. If you've rejected Jesus, hell is coming. If you have accepted Jesus, heaven is coming. But right at that end, all men stand alone. Now I want to ask you a question. Do you believe that if you've accepted Jesus, He saved you from your sins? Come on, show me by hands. Okay. So you believe fully that when you die, He will be there. Right? So if you believe that for your sins, you have to believe that for your diseases. And the reason being is very simple. He bore my sickness and He bore my shame. He bore my guilt. He bore my con condemnation. And the Father's wrath was poured upon Him because He took it. If He took it, I can't take it. He bore it. The word bore is the word substitution. He became the substitute that carried my sins. He became the substitute of carrying my diseases. He took it away from me. And therefore, I can't carry it anymore. It's not mine. It's been legally bought by the blood. I'll say it again. It's been legally bought by the blood. And because it's bought by the blood, church, we have to believe that if He took your sins, He took your sickness. So sickness have no right to you. No, oh, do I have any believers here this morning? Sickness doesn't have a right to you. Because Jesus bought you. That means you are, let me use an example. I want to I wanna get through to you. I'll use another example. If you see a criminal in your property, will you sit around? Why not? Because they shouldn't be there, right? Why? It's your property. But why are we so easily on the other side, why do we permit so easily criminals to be in our bodies and we think it's okay? No, blood pressure, high blood pressure is not okay. Disease of the organs is not okay. Rheumatoid arthritis is not okay. Cancer is not okay. These things need to go. Because say of me, the covenant is of me. That's right. Covenant is of you. You are kingdom property. Look at this scripture. Exodus chapter number 2, verse number 23. Yes, I'm making it easy for you guys. You're just in the same book this morning. Exodus chapter number 2, verse number 23. Listen to this. Now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then the children, oh, I just want to say something prophetic here. For everything Satan does, there's an expiration date. For everything the devil does, there's an expiration date. May you receive that prophetically this morning. For everything that the devil does, I tell you, there's an expiration date. Why? You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Yes, I felt God on that. He will not have the final say because he's not the Alpha and he's not the Omega. Let me say it like this. He, he might have owned a certain chapter in the story, but definitely the chapter is not owned by him. 
Come on, do I have someone with me? Yeah. Tell him, devil, it's Jesus writing this book. Okay, then look at this, Exodus 2, 23. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage. Sickness is bondage. And they cried out. And their cry came up before God because of the bondage. Verse 24. So God heard their groaning. And God remembered His covenant of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God acknowledged them. I want you to see here, I want you to see the compassion of Jesus. The Bible says that the Father heard their groaning and He remembered the covenant of healing or He remembered the covenant of deliverance and He remembered the covenant of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and what did the Father do? He sent a deliverer. May you know this morning, just shift that sound for me, may you know this morning that the Father hears you groan even as you go like, ah, here. The Father's love is so scandalous, He hears your groaning. May I, may I add to this? Sometimes when we look to faith, we when look to healing, we, we look to the greatness of our faith. You know what? There was a man in the Bible that says, Jesus, if you can. How's that for faith? Jesus, if you can. And Jesus doesn't deny that this man is, must have more faith. Jesus turns the tables and He says, if you believe, then it will be done for you. But I want you to see, Jesus does not deny the miracle because of the small measure of faith. Jesus turns the tables and Jesus says to the man, if you believe, believe me. Are you there? It is not the list of to-dos that we do right. It is a God that has already died for us that we have to receive and say healing is my portion. Wealth is my portion. Abundance is my portion. This is who I am. And if you say that's not so, then let me remind you of Romans 8, 32. Or yeah, 32 that says this, if God did not spare His own Son but gave Him up for His all, how will He not give us all things? You see, the Bible says that God said to us, Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, so that all things may be added unto us. The problem with many Christians is they're looking for the added things. They're spending their lives running after what can be added. Where the Father said, spend your life seeking my kingdom, seeking my right standing, and I will add to you. You see, God cannot add to you if He's not the center and the foundation. So trust the Father's word. The Father's word is seek the kingdom and He'll add. God never said you must add. Give Him His job back. Let Him do the adding and you do the seeking. Come on, that, that has saved 40 years of your life if you've listened. Stop chasing for the adding stuff. Chase the kingdom. If you want the kingdom and His righteousness, please note, the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. But He highlights righteousness. Why does He highlight righteousness? Because it is hard for us to understand. It's not about us, but it's for us. We struggle with this concept that Jesus did it all. We want to add to the equation, we also have done some. It's true, you have done one thing, and that is you were born. The rest is choosing God. But if I take that really according to the Word, you haven't chosen Him. He chose you. He chose you. Gomer stands in Satan's slave market. She's a prostitute. She's standing there. And as she stands there, she's about to be sold, Isaiah chapter number three. And about to be sold, the people are being for her. 
they are throwing prices. And if you were a New Testament slave, your price would go up if you had good teeth, if you had a good temperament, if you were pretty on the outside, your price would go up. And the people are, are, are being, I want Gomer. And they put the prices down. This is what I'm willing to pay. Because she's pretty. And suddenly in this slave market of people's voices fighting for her, she hears the familiar voice of her husband, Hosea. And it's the voice of love. And you hear the voice shouting out over the crowd, I'll pay the full price. And that slave owner sees that there's a man that's in love. He drives up the price. And you'll find if you go and study that scripture, Uzziah pays a ridiculous price to get Gomer back. Fast forward that story a couple of thousand years for, 2024 years back. You and I, we stuck. We're in Satan's slave market. We're stuck in sin. We're stuck in sickness. We're stuck in poverty. We're stuck. We're stuck. We're stuck. And Satan is being. And suddenly the sun shows up upon the scene. He's in love. And he starts to be. He says, I want them. I'll pay for them. But we were dead in our trespasses and sin, Ephesians 2, 5 to 6. Yet the sun cries. Yet the sun says, I'll pay. I'll go. Satan sees Jesus once as he drives up that price all the way up. Jesus makes eventually the, the fullness of the statement, I'll pay lutros, I'll pay the full demanded price. I'll die for them. And he pays by his blood. He hangs on the cross. And as he's hanging on the cross, the Father puts sin upon him. The Father puts your disease, your sickness, your infirmities, everything is on Jesus. Now Jesus hangs as a precipice between, between the past you and the new you. He hangs, blood stricken, blood pouring, beard plucked out, head with the scars of thorns, and his feet is mockers. He acts. Father turns away. And Jesus says something. He says, Father, I'll just reword it differently a little bit. But it's the same words. Father, what I've come for, I've accomplished. I've come to take the sins of the world. I've come to remove the diseases. It is is finished. Listen to me, church. Don't start when he finished. When it comes to healing, it's a gift. And you must receive the gift. You don't need to perform. Just receive. I'll say it again. Jesus didn't go halfway. He went all the way. You see, but what do you, what do you do? What do you do? Just a few thoughts. What do you do if you don't see God's hand? Because many times in life, if you've walked with God long enough, you sometimes don't see His hand. I want to help. Never create a, uh, never create a theology on what you didn't see. Say that again. Never create a th theology on what you didn't see. God is good. Don't change your theology based on what you didn't see. If you don't see God's hand, you have to trust His character. But don't shift who you believe He is because you didn't see it like you wanted to see it. Many people do it. We create a theology of lack. We create a theology why he didn't. We create a theology of ifs and maybes. There isn't an if and there isn't a maybe. God is God and we are not. And we have to trust him fully. And we need to believe fully that he's the God that heals. 
He's the God that redeems. He's the God that helps us. He's the God that saves us. He's good. Some of you here this morning is sitting here, you didn't see the breakthrough for your loved ones. I want to help you this morning. You don't honor your loved ones by getting stuck at the place of pain, by getting stuck at the place of shame. No, glorify, or let me say it like this, let your loved ones that you've lost be a point of joy. Don't let it be a point of sorrow because they are where you want to be. And that's with the Lord, right? Is there anybody with me here? And so if they were here, they would tell you, don't get stuck. Go on. But often, what we go through becomes a place that we get stuck. It's time to move on. It's time to move on. Can I encourage you? It's time to move on. The old is gone. The new has come. You see, pain is not authorized to destroy you. Pain is not authorized to destroy you. It might be present for a moment, but that's to keep you dependent, not to destroy. Satan has no right to destroy. Do you believe what I'm saying? If you are a temple, which you are, and if you are a temple of the Most High God, which you are, and Satan has no legal say over you as a temple. Come on. I'm emphasizing it this morning because it's, it's important. If, if Jesus saved my soul, Jesus heals my body. God says a few more thoughts. God, God says to, to the Israelites, listen. I'm about to cross through the, the, the nation of Egypt and I'm gonna take all the firstborn. But for you, I want you to take the Passover lamb, eat it, he gives very specific instructions. And then he says, I want you to take the blood. I want you to smear it over the lintel. I want you to smear it on the cross, on the door. And wherever I see the blood, I'll pass you over. Now think of me. Three million plus Jews. Three million plus Jews. And the angel of death passes by. He's only looking for one thing. He's not even studying who's inside the house. He's looking for one thing. What is he looking for? The blood. Wherever the blood is found, he passes over. On you this morning as you sit here, you will have a blood washed cross on that spirit. And by right, the enemy has to pass over. And if he does come, you have to resist him and say, hey, resist the devil, submit to God. Please note that and he shall flee from you. The devil cannot flee if you are in submission to yourself. The devil flees when you come in submission to God because that's a higher power. It's a higher truth. It's a higher reality. It's a higher name. Oh, come on. He bore my sins. He took it. He took it. If He took it, then I shouldn't take it. If He is... If He took it, why do we hold on to it? Can I ask you a question this morning? Why do we keep other people also stuck? Because we are not, listen to me church. Sometimes the body of Christ can be very cruel. We want to give theologies why people can't. No. Don't be like that. Don't say you should have prayed like this. How do you know? 
Don't say you should have done it like that. You're not the Savior. I'm telling you, Jesus healed every single person that came to Him. Jesus healed every single person He went to. And so He's not looking for perfect people. He's just looking for vessels. He's looking for you. He's looking for me. That's it. He bore my sins. He took my disease. He took it. And I'm preaching this morning. Listen, I'm not preaching out of a place where I've always seen it. There's days that I didn't see it. And there's lots of days that I did see it. But it never, seeing or not seeing, <laughs> does not change what I believe. You have to know that about yourself too. Sometimes you'll see it. Sometimes you don't see it. And when you don't see it, you don't need other brothers and sisters to give you a theology of why you didn't. Are you with me? You can just believe with them, fight with them, contend with them, cry with them, feel with them, experience what they experience, but don't become a judge. I'll say it again. Don't become a judge. Leave the accusation to Satan. Listen, to be a Christian in 2024 is hard enough. To keep your heart pure is hard enough. To keep your eyes clean is hard enough. We don't need spiritual people helping Satan out. Show me your hands quickly. Your hands are made to heal. Everything you touch must be restored. Because you know why? These hands, these hands are a channel between Him and people. That's it. That's healing for you. So it's very, it's very simply this. Here stands in front of me a person. They, they are Abba's embrace. They, they, they want Abba loves. Now, if I know, know him, I know it's what he loves. Are you there? If I don't know him, then I don't know what he loves. Have you been married here longer than 20 years? Quickly put up your hand. Okay, well done for being married for 20 years, by the way. But who of you know, if you've been married for 20 years, you kind of know what your partner likes. Right? Same of the Lord. I know the Lord. I know what He likes. And what He wants? I'm an ambassador. Say with me, I'm an ambassador. And so the only thing He wants, He wants me to demonstrate Him well. I must represent Him. That's it. I'm a channel of His compassion. I'm a channel of His love. I'm a person that He has chosen to show love on His behalf. Come on, are you there? And all He wants is to stretch out my hands. Contact point. When I touch, He heals. How do I know? He said it. This is what the devil does. The devil tells you, you are not worthy to touch. Because he keeps you at your point of failure, right? He gives you that little list that goes out in your head. I didn't pray. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. Yeah? But it's not your righteousness. It's his. So what are you doing? You are just giving his healing to this person. Of course, you have to be in right standing of the Father. I don't, I'm not minimizing that. But the standard of healing is not your goodness. Say that again. The standard of healing is not your goodness. 
the standard for the Father to arrive is Jesus' righteousness. And so He heals everybody He touches. Why? Because He paid the price. Time flies. Acts 10, 38. Jesus Christ was anointed by God, healing all, healing all that were oppressed by the devil, for God was with Him. Please note that. If God is with you, He will heal all. Last thought, and then we're going to trust God together here this morning. And the people that are online, I want you to, to participate. Jesus removed the power of sin. And because He removed the power of sin, He removed the power of sickness. Does it mean that you and I won't sometimes sin? No, we will still sin at times. But you're no longer a sinner because you have a new nature. Your new nature makes you a new creation. Therefore, sin is something that happens every now and again, but you're no longer a sinner. You're saved by grace. You have a new nature. Your new nature now is holy. And if you are holy, then sin doesn't have power. Do you understand that, church? Last thought, and I want us to be eradicated from this thing. The people are so scared of death. Why are you scared of death? Why are we scared of something He conquered? I want us just to stop moving just for a moment. Listen carefully. Why are we afraid of what He is present in? You will not go to the grave without Him. It's impossible. If you know Him, He's there. So death has no fear in you because Christ is in you. Death has no power over you because life is in you. Because Christ is in you. Sin has no longer a hold on you because you are not a sinner. You have a new cre creation. You are a new, you are a new crea creation. You are now holy by nature. Therefore, if death doesn't have a hold, if sin doesn't have a hold, why should we be carrying somebody else's baggage? Let's send it back. Let's give back to the devil that belonged to his. And you take life. You understand? Let me leave you with this thought and then we're going to pray. God paid for you. Say with me, God paid for me. He paid for your eternal life and He paid for the wholeness of your body. We have to receive it. It's not by our acts of righteousness, it's by His sheer grace. Each and every one of us, last sentence, each and every one of us are called by God to displace the works of the devil. We have to tear it down. We have to break it down. And we don't do so by might. We don't do so by power. We do it by the Spirit of the Lord that's with us. Are you there? Come and give Jesus some praise. And what I want to trust the Lord for this morning, I'm, I'm, it's, a, it's a revelation deep within my being that Christ is the healer, that Jesus is the physician. I don't need to be convinced. I am convinced. I just want to see it. So this morning, we're going to trust God not if we can, He can. But we're going to see His healing in our bodies today. Yes? 
So if that's you, if you have any infirmant in your body, I want you to stand, please. If there's any sickness, any disease in that body, I want you to stand. People online, I want you to do the same. There we are. That's you. If you have any form of sickness and disease, I want you to comment your name. There's people that will, that will pray for you. And you can even put your number in if you want to. They'll call you. I'll say again, church, listen, we full, full, full this morning. There's sickness and disease in your body. Stand. You can stand proxy even this morning for somebody else. It's okay. If you are born again, your whole family shall be saved. Jesus said that to us. We can stand on that. I want the rest of the body of Christ quickly to go around these precious people and quickly lay hands. Come, let's go. Everybody, let's heal. Let's heal people this morning. A lot of people standing. I don't want anybody alone. I want, come on church, don't sit. Not the time to sit. Quickly go, quickly go, quickly go. Look for people. I want every person that's in the building to have people with them. Now let's pray, let's pray together. Father, I pray right now in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we break the power of sickness. We welcome you in this, into this building right now, Lord Holy Spirit. We welcome you into this place right now, Spirit of the Most High God. Lord, we break the power of sin. We break the power of sin. We break the power of sickness, disease over people's bodies in this morning, right now in Jesus' mighty name. And we declare over you that you are made whole. We declare of your body, your mind, your spirit, the healing power of Jesus. We declare of you right now that that sickness that is in your body shall go right now. In Jesus' name. Lord, we break patterns this morning. We break cycles of Satan. We break witchcraft. We break the power of Satan through other people. We break the words spoken in death. We break your power this morning in Jesus' name. And Lord, we declare of your people in this day healing right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for healing in the bodies right now in the name of Jesus. Healing, 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 healing. We speak healing. We declare your healing power. We declare your healing power. Come on, church, pray, 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 pray. Pray, pray, pray. We declare healing. We declare healing. We declare healing. If you're feeling something in your body, if you feel like heat on your body right now, I want you just to wave a hand at me. If you feel heat, heat or something is moving in your body, I want you just to wave at me quickly. There's people waving, 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 waving. Great, great, that's God busy touching people. Come on church, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. There's a lot of people here. Let's just agree together. Thank you, Father, that healing is the portion of the people this morning. I want us to pray, guys, come on. Yes, Lord, thank you. Thank you for healing. We thank you, Lord, that you touch people right now. There are people that were just touched by God. If that's you, if you feel a difference in your body, I want you just to show me by your hands. Just wave your hands at me that I can, that I can see. There are people there at the back that I see. I see people here. I see people here in front. Praise God. Just wave your hand at me if you can there. I see people there. Praise God. Lord, heal your people. I, I feel the Spirit of the Lord saying to me very specifically, there are people here, you have received a medical report. A medical report. A medical report. If that's you, I want you to put up one hand very high. One hand very, very high. A medical report. A medical report. There's, I see those people. If you have received a medical report, I want you to put up one hand very, very high. 
Church, I want you to quickly look for the people with the one hands up. And I want you to quickly lay hands on these people. Come on. There's about 10, 20 of them. 30 I see. Just keep those hands up high, 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 fast that we can see you. I want a believer with these precious people. Here in front team or family. Come on, there's people here. Just one person here I see. There's a... There's a lady there at the back that I see with her hand up. There we go. I see, okay, there I see. Thank you guys. I see you are with her. Church, I need you to pray with me right now. I need you to agree. We're going to cancel these reports. We're going to cancel these reports. Come on, let's pray. I want the whole church, the whole church to pray with me in the spirit, please. What about that to be ended it? Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we break every report in Jesus' name. And Father, I want to ask you right now for divine healing to come into bodies in Jesus' name. Father, we pray right now, Lord, restore bodies. Restore bodies right now. Lord, we ask for your healing power to flood through these bodies in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray from the top of the head to the soles of the feet that healing takes place right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. I want you, the people that were prayed for, I want you to examine yourself quickly. Examine yourself, examine yourself, examine yourself. Do something that you couldn't do before. If you had a stiff neck, move your neck. If you had a problem with your arm, move your arm. If you had a problem with your back, move your back. And then if there's any sign of healing in your body, I want you to wave at me quickly. But check yourself, check yourself, check yourself, check yourself. If there's people with healing in their bodies, I want you just to wave your hand. Just wave for me that I can see. I see people here. Praise God. Thank you. Is there anybody here that you were touched? Just show your hand with me. Wave your hand. There are people here. There are people there at the back. There are people. Praise God. All the, all, there's people there at the back. Okay, listen to me, church. I want everybody to quickly stand. Come on, everybody stand. Church, can we believe God that this whole church and all our other churches, that there will be one, not one sickness amongst us? Can we believe the Lord for this? Okay. It's easy for the Lord to heal. It's not we, it's His, His job, Right? But we are assigned to it, I understand. The point is, can we trust God? Because all of us here are trusting the Lord that we are saved from sin, right? So can we trust Him to be sickness free? Yeah, same faith. Same faith. So I want you to be I want you to trust God with me. Lift your hands to the Lord. Come on. You must make up your heart here. Yes, Holy Spirit. Come and flow. Come and flow. Come and make up your heart, church. Say with me, Father, we receive the healing of Jesus Christ paid for us by His blood we receive the covenant of health as it is written there shall not be a disease amongst my people so we believe that you take our sickness you take our disease in Jesus name 
Father, we put our faith in Jesus, in His finished work, that it is done, and that He, the Christ, bore our sins, and He bore our sicknesses, and He took it away, no longer ours. In Jesus' name, Father, we receive Jesus Christ as the final authority over our lives. Complete healing, body, spirit, and soul. In Jesus' name. Now I just want to have your hands raised to the Lord like that. I see a lot of people commenting online. You are welcome to keep on commenting and leave us your number. They'll call you. I want you just to receive this. Receive what you've just declared. Receive that. Father, we declare that over your people. That healing is their portion. That deliverance is their right. That freedom is their blood-bought inheritance. And that healthy bodies is who they are. We receive that in this day in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Lord. Now, people of chronic headaches, it's going. I see back pain that the Lord is touching right now. There are somebody here, you need to help in your organs. I see how the Lord is just helping that out. Are people here, you haven't slept well, you're going to sleep well tonight. God's going to help you, He's going to aid you. He's going to aid you here. Is there people here this morning? Yes, Lord. Can we believe the Lord that it's finished today? Come on. Can we trust the Lord? I want to trust God. Yes, Lord. There we are this morning. I want you just to to receive from the Lord. That's why I'm waiting. I'm just, I'm not waiting because I'm stupid. I'm waiting because I'm listening. Can you trust the Lord with me? As we leave this place, you leave it disease free. Come on, can we trust God? I want us just to receive from Him again. Come on, just do that. Um, Come on, I'm teaching you. Receive from Him. Remember, you're not going to the Father based on your goodness, based on Jesus' goodness. You're not going to the Father based on your righteousness, His righteousness. And you're not trying to convince Him. He's already convinced. You are just receiving the free gift. That's it. You're a recipient of the gift of God. Father, I pray across this room, all of these people, Lord, heal now in Jesus' name. Let that healing be pressed into their spirits in the mighty name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, come. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. There's a lie that I see in the spirit. There's a lie that you will go, that you will not live out your days. I break that lie right now in the name of Jesus. You will live out your days. Amen and amen. Come on, let's just give Jesus some praise. Let's give Jesus just some proper praise. I want to encourage you, church. I, I'll take you on to this, but I, I trust the Lord fully. You know, we have to be convinced about his, what He's convinced about. Are you there? Come on, give Jesus some praise. Lastly, I want to encourage all of you, before we see students graduate, I want to encourage all of you that never, I'll say it one more time because I said it before, never create a theology of why you don't see it. No, we believe God, full stop. It has to be like that. 
Amen. I, I feel we can do better. Come on, let's give Him proper praise this morning. Come on. You can stand some of the, just there where you are as well because we're going to honor people. You know in this church we like to honor people as we see the grace on their lives. This morning we have 367 students that did EBI Empowered Bible Institute. And this morning, 343 of them are graduating. Hallelujah. And we had 83 group facilitators that did this and 230, 260 uh, group members that did this. Amen. So um, there's all the group members that is behind me and, and you will just see a massive amount of names. You know, if you, as you see these names, you must see that sentence in the Bible, Ephesians, that says, equip the saints. That's what you must see. And so for all the students this morning, I want to just say congratulations. Well done. Thank you for doing another Empower Bible Institute. You are absolutely awesome and amazing. And we just want to honor you this morning. And as I say that, I want to encourage you, Tuesday starts our, our next EBI. Don't miss that. I think this is the most important one I'll do because I'm going to go into a prophetic timeline to show you exactly where we are and why is it happening, what's happening around us. Thank God for the Bible. We don't need to be clueless. We are informed people. Amen. Before I give over to Pastor Stephen, I want you to lift your hands one more time. Yes, Lord. You have got nothing to fear, says the Lord. You have got nothing to fear. There's no power and no other spirit here that is stronger than Jesus. As you leave today, there's no other power that is stronger than the blood. No satanic power. I feel that just to say that I sense in my spirit there are people here, you're afraid of ancestral things, you're afraid of other people's things. And listen, there's no power in other spirits but the overriding, breaking power of Jesus. That's right. So don't fear. Father, I want to pray over my people this morning. Each and every one of them, I want to pray over them in this day that they'll receive the full healing, spirit, soul, body in Jesus' name. Lord, I want to speak over their lives in this day that they will receive your word. These are not my words, Lord. These are your words. But Father, I speak out over them this morning that they will know that your word is truth. Your word brings freedom. Your word brings deliverance. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, amen. amen and amen. Come on. Amen and amen. Then lastly, as Pastor Stephen comes, then I want to encourage all the business people. You have to get the book, Kingdom Business CEO. It's one of my, it's my latest book that I wrote. It will help you to prosper as a business person. And I'll be there in the foyer to sign that for you. I want you to know, lastly, from my side, I love you very, very much. And please note that Shannon and I, we pray for you on a daily basis. You are loved in this church. Come on, tell the person next to you, I'm loved. Come on, say that of boldness, I'm loved. As Pastor Stephen comes, let's give Jesus 10 more seconds. Come on, let's give him some prayer. Good morning, church. You're welcome to just to be quickly seated just for a brief moment. The people that's with us online, if you can just stay with us. Just want to, we want to honor the Lord as part of our, our worship. How many of you were touched in your body this morning? Come on, you don't, we don't do that just like, yeah, from this moment. You lift up your hands to Jesus and you give Him praise, you give Him honor. And as we do that this morning, that's part of our worship to say, God, if you can do it for the person sitting in my row or next to me, even for myself, you can do it for any person. What is impossible with man is possible with God. You see, if, if there's people around here that God has been so kind to in business-wise, in, in a, 
if you, if you work for, empl- uh, for an employer and there's, there's things that you've been trusting for, God is not a respecter of man. Bible says, what is too difficult for the Lord? I think it's the book of Isaiah or Jeremiah that quotes that. So this morning, as we honor the Lord, may we stand in faith to say this week will be full of good and pleasant surprises. Come on, everybody loves to quote Jeremiah 29 to say, my thoughts towards you are good. Thoughts not to harm you. Thoughts to? (laughs) Can you imagine God saying that His heart and His thought is to prosper you? That means that you and your family would increase. But we need to believe Him that it's His thoughts towards us. So as would we do that this morning, can we stand in faith to say, God, we're going to believe You for good and pleasant surprises, that God can settle debt, that He can pay off things that you've even trusted for, but you've forgotten to pray about that. Bible says way before you ask Him, He already knows. But this morning we can remind Him to say, God, You're not just our God. You are our Father. So as we do that this morning, can we stand together and we want to declare a few things. Can we use our mouths to declare? Can we do that? Bible says this one thing, with two or more agree on whatsoever, so it shall be. But there's one special verse in Psalm 133 that says the following, there where there's unity, there He has commanded His blessing. Are you ready for that? No, I think it's to that side there was like five, this side there was three. Pastor Simi, I think we, we must just make that declaration, just get ready. Are you ready to receive from the Lord? Amen. No man can do it. God can do it. So let's pray together. Say, Father God, this morning, I realize once again for everything that you paid dearly for is mine through Jesus. Lord, thank you for good gifts, pleasant surprises, Thank you, God, that you provide all my needs in Christ Jesus. Lord, increase me that I might be a blessing to those around me. Thank you, God, that my life will bear witness as the same blessings that you provided to Abram. Lord, I pray, as would we agree together this morning, that you call...